welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Who are you people? Uh, we're, we're your friends. What? I've heard no such things. Lies and slander. I know, man. Oh, man. Like, I uh, remember last week when you came by and said you wanted to borrow sugar. Huh? Joke's on you. I am practicing social distancing. Your sugar does not appeal to me. And be gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, nobody's violent. But anywho, joining us today is Tatera. I don't remember why I'm here. I knew it was for some reason, but I can't exactly remember why I'm here. Yeah, it, it's, on, it's to report on the thing that might be happening soonish. Remember that one? Wait, there's a report? I didn't even study! <laughs> Tough luck! You failed! <laughs> so, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review My Little Pony Quest Struggles Forgotten Friendship. Uh, in this special, Sunset Shimmer discovers that she's been erased from her friend's memory and must re- <laughs> and must race to find the magic and the perpetrator responsible. So before we get into this, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think? Well, this is uh, one of the specials that I thought was of the higher end of the Quest for Girls. Uh... Mostly because of Wallflower Blush and the villainy. Or not even true villain, just a lot of anger. But it's kind of funny that the episode seems to... The special seems to shift around what it wants to be. Is it a beachside adventure? Is it a bonding between uh, Sunset and Trixie of all characters? Is it the story of Wallflower Blush? It's trying to be several things all at once. And therefore, it can also feel a little forgettable. If anything, <clears throat> I'm sorry, if anything, I wonder about, is this really just uh, an episode remembered for beachside swimsuit outfits? Not really for me, but from what I can tell uh, with the beachside thing, they really, really wanted to promote that thing because we got specials or we got shorts that involve uh, the beach scenario and they were a lot. And... Most of them are just meh. Just remember, life's a beach, then you fly. <laughs> Alrighty then. Anyway, Tara, what about you? I really like this special. I mean, it tackles a few things that question me in the back um, with the whole question your girls thing. But at the same time, what Silver said, there's like all these different types of plots with Sunset and Trixie getting along and also Sunset trying to get the memories back. Well, also she's, I mean, it was very quick, but basically Sunset making up with Celestia. I mean, I'm not that I'm complaining, but all these could have been done in like little mini episodes and they could have had more time to explain it. It's like, say for example, instead of just Celestia agreeing or, um, how do I say this? A no, uh, oh, what's wrong with my brain today? <laughs> Are you forgetting um, stuff? Forgiving. No, no, ah, I think I am forgetting something. <laughs> Curse you, Wallflower! <laughs> but no, I remember that. Uh, when she forgives Sunset, they they probably could have done like a whole episode where Sunset thinks, oh, well, Celestia's gonna be mad at me, oh, and then this whole episode is just them trying to figure out a way for Celestia to forgive her, and then this whole time she's just trolling, and it's like, oh yeah, I miss you this whole time, haha, ha. didn't need to make, didn't need, eh, didn't need to make a big deal out of it. I understand, I, I totally understand, I would love that too, but at the back of my mind... It's not like I'm complaining. True, but at the back of my mind, I, I think that what we got here was enough, because I, I don't know why, or I don't know what, because I feel that if they were to pursue that angle where we have a 22 minute episode where um, Sunset is trying to mend fences with Celestia and we get this whole adventure kind of thing, it feels a bit, to me, I feel it might be forced or just rammed right into your face. Like, yeah, this is what's going on. Uh, Celestia is going to be forgiving Sunset, blah, 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 blah. But I, I'm not sure. Maybe we can talk about it more near the end or when we reach that part. But as for me, I kind of like this special. But I, I don't know. How do I put this? I enjoy watching it, but I don't look forward to watching it. It feels like... Hmm... How, how do I even put this? Because I, I feel like we've established that Sunset is a awesome character. She progress really well and you pull that out under the rug and we don't even 
see the main six try to figure out what is Sunset's game here? Why is she uh, so buddy buddy with us? Isn't she a mean bully? And I don't know. I mean, it feels like the main six could have been much better, but we'll get into it when we reach the point or wherever it is. So anyway, uh, if you have not watched the special, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the special because it was a lot of fun. So anywho, we start off with a musical montage. Yay! Um, the montage set, set sunset going through school, taking photo for the yearbook, and just reminding us, hey guys, here's what happened to sunset. Uh, she was a bully, then turned good guy, and she saved Twilight from becoming Mean Like Sparkle and so on. Yay! And she's on the yearbook committee. Oh no, she bumped into a girl. Who's this girl? I don't know. Don't care. Moving on. I care about her fashion sense. Uh, true that. We'll, we'll uh, talk about it soon enough. So, when they discuss stuff, Trixie pops in saying that I demand a spot on the yearbook. So, Sunset just says no. And she moves away via magic. And Sunset and her gang leave the yearbook room leaving Wallflower alone. And I'm going to pause here. Silver, what do you think? Well, honestly, I always find it kind of funny when they want to immortalize their traumatic attacks by magical creatures. It's like, do we really want to immortalize this? But, eh, to each their own. I guess I just find it funny. There's also the fact I wouldn't want a, a documented record of my... Uh, magical shenanigans lest I wind up in a government facility with two guys in sunglasses and earpieces <laughs> looking down at me. We have need of your talents. <laughs> I'm here to talk to you about the Get Backers initiative. <laughs> oh, boys. It sets up the premise really well, and it is sort of a... Hey, hey, remember when we, we watched Sunset Shema? Remember? <laughs> But at the same time, Wallflower is the most interesting because instantly she stands out as the most plain. Her fashion and design is so completely different than the highly stylized and uh, icon-ridden clothing. Truth is, Wallflower looks more like what a regular uh, teenager would wear. I would like to counter that, but by looking at some of the students at CHS High... She is practically the odd duck out. Well, that's because most students look like the Hot Topic vomited on them. Well, not really, because uh, when you notice, okay, uh, on in the gallery for the wiki, uh, top row, uh, I, I, I don't know how you call, column, yeah, last column, top row, you, you see a girl with uh, an orange top, sorry, um, carrot top hair, uh, almost look like carrot top, but with black t-shirts, a scarf, and a long black, long jean skirt. Like to me, that's normal. But she pops out. Like she pops out more than how Wallflower is. Because when you look at Wallflower, she's meant to be in the background. Like she's not meant to stand out at all. Oh, but there's one th one thing on the skirt you don't fully see. You see that just that little uh, wedge of darkness. Mm -hmm. Because whatever her cutie mark might be, uh, it's displayed on the other side. Plus, I don't trust anyone who wears a scarf like that. <laughs> <laughs> but in all honesty, we do see other students with uh, close to our sense of fashion. But like what? Uh, microchip. He's considered to be what quote unquote normal for a nerd, but his quote unquote cutie mark would be the pin that he has on his suspenders because I've never seen anyone in high school wearing suspenders. You're not old enough then. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that, Norman. <laughs> it is something I do not hear very often. Ah, I'll show you, Norman. I suggest, however, that you get your eyes checked. <laughs> But anyway, um, is that all silver? <laughs> there, there, silver. 
<laughs> Terrell, uh, before you comfort Silver, what, 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 what do you have to say? What do you mean before you comfort Silver? Yeah, what are you saying? You saying I can't comfort him? No. You we, made we, him cry, Norman. <laughs> Shame on you. Norman, you monster. Uh, I have been known for that. Yes. What are you, Terra? Well, I, I mean, I do like how the the beginning they kind of set up the how pretty much everything's gonna be because the song is called uh, like, well, basically talking about how we've come so far with our friendship and this and that, and they mention about what happened in the past, and it's like, okay, this thing's called forgotten friendship, so obviously something's gonna happen with their friendship. The only thing that kind of confuses me though is that when they're when Sunset's talking about, you know, oh yeah, Twilight's always been there for me and she helped me be who I become. That's Twilight from Equestria. It's not the one that's in this world. I mean, it's just a little nitpick, but still, it's like, that's a totally different Twilight that you're talking about. And you're with a new Twilight. And I also agree too with uh, Wallflower not, like, actually being in normal clothes and not something that's so flashy and, like, you know, I'm not a, a fashion expert or anything, but I mean, come on. You see everyone wearing like all of these flashy shirts and everything. They just got Wallflower wearing a casual shirt and uh, pants and whatnot. Although I do question, though, why they put in the yearbook the biggest meanie in school. I mean, I've never heard of anything like that. <laughs> I mean, if they did that back when I was in high school, they should give me one for being the most nicest guy ever. <laughs> Uh, I don't have your book, so I got no idea. Maybe I do, I forgot. Huh. Oh, everyone's forgetting nowadays. Mm, true, not true. Not. We're all forgetting. The past is lost. Our future is doomed. Etika! Etika! Nah, man. We got Twitter for that. <laughs> well, I mean, I forgot how long I've been at my house for because of this whole quarantine stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, anyway, I'm going to carry on. So... We see Sunset's uh, house, apartment, and it looks pretty good. Like for a teenager who doesn't really have a job, she is living well. Wow. What? I'm jealous. She actually got a nice setup there too. Yeah, I, I'm guessing this is a studio apartment. Like what? How? Hey, she's even got dual monitors. I know. And, oh my god. I, I, okay, maybe it's just me and I'm jealous, but she is living well. How does she even pay for all of that? Well, you never know what a sushi restaurant job will really net you. True. It's a raw deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't make anyone choke, right, Silver? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a well-timed joke. Oh god. Yes. Oh, but anywho, uh, Sunset, I'm going to carry on. <laughs> uh, Sunset uh, reminisce about the yearbook and uh, writes a letter to Princess Twilight saying that, Yo, Princess Twilight, I really changed, haven't I? Uh, this is going to be fun. I can't wait to go to the beach with my friends tomorrow. I hope nothing bad happens. And tomorrow, we see everyone at the beach, hanging out, getting ready to take their best friend picture thingy. And when Sunset meets up with everyone, they're guarded. Like, they are confused. Why is Sunset talking to them? And everybody is kind of being very, very aggressive towards Sunset. Um, Sunset, being really confused, uh, touches Applejack's hand and reads her memory, which is kind of rude. But anywho... She goes into Applejack's mind and notice that her memory of Sunset has been erased. All of it. And that worries her. And she tries to tell them, I was there, like I was with you guys when certain scenario happens. And uh, wait, don't you remember me and stuff? And this is, and this goes back and forth between them. And uh, we see... Sunset goes to the bottom of the lifeguard tower and message Princess Celestia asking her for guidance or just asking, do you remember me or not? And are we friends? Wait, wait, wait. She asked Princess Celestia? Sorry, Twilight. Oh, man. That's the thing. <laughs> so, anywho, I'm going to pause here because I noticed something interesting that is not in the special, um, full special. So, um, Tara, 
what do you think? Well, I mean, I'm still going to talk about how Sunset's loving because, I mean, come on. She's got a nice TV. She's got dual monitors. She's got a setup for when she plays the electric guitar. I mean, she's living the good life. True that. <laughs> I'm jealous. Oh, true that. And she has what? A acoustic guitar, a flying V, and I, I'm not sure what that one could be. Probably a Fabricaster or something like that. Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. Those are expensive. Can't really say much here. It's just, you know, the main six hanging out. Verity pointing out all these different kinds of quote-unquote colors or whatever. Which I still don't understand, you know, what's the difference between white and eggshell and so on and so forth. <laughs> but then it's like, um... As soon as the Sunset grabs uh, Applejack's hand and realizes, oh, you don't remember me. And then she's telling us about how, you know, we have, um, we had all these memories together. How can you not remember me? We even have the same necklace. And she's like, oh, it's just a t cheap knockoff. And it's like, don't you think that would ring a few bells, though? It's like, you got the same necklace, and she's able to read your memories with magic. But I guess their memories that forgotten that it kind of made them dunce. <laughs> yeah. And he, here's the part where I feel a bit frustrated with the main six because they never once question why Sunset is being nice and uh, or just just remember certain scenarios like why is Sai Twai with them? Like how did she came to join them and stuff? Like those kind of scenarios they're kind of irk me it, it's minor but it's one of those things where if they could just ask more questions and like proceed like i mean that's just my views oh man sorry uh any more to add tara mm, no not really anyway uh silver what about you well it's obvious that uh sunset makes all her money off her streaming because that's something that anyone can do afford a place just on streaming money Oh, that's true. That's true, that's true. Those Twitch subs, yo. Honestly, I I prefer to think that uh, she murdered the previous tenant and has just been living off their uh, <laughs> bank account. Oh, did I mention that I'm incredibly grimdark right now? Okay. You're always grimdark. Meh. Here's the thing. I mean, the qu Twilight and the others are basically just there for cute little asides from the main plot. It's kind of stunning how little they're involved in this story as active participants they are much like the rest of the student body they're more victims than than contributors i will admit a beachside episode has launched a thousand fan arts and that's where i think most of the memory of this special comes from but i agree with you that it's kind of frustrating that the main six don't think this over all, all sunset has to say is twilight you turned into midnight sparkle right who talked you out of it and then right there if she can't recall something that pivotal, then that's a clear sign that they've been tampered with. True, and you start this whole panic about what, 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 who, who, who helped me, and Sunset could just say it was me, but don't remember. And they start their own investigation while being wary of Sunset because they might think that she's manipulating their memories and whatnot. Or she could just pull off a really great meme. You thought it was someone else, but it was me, <laughs> Sunset. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not that far. Uh, who was that? Kurushi Panda made that uh, really awesome music video. <laughs> Sorry, just reminded me of the Pillar Men's. Carry on. And so, but we're introduced at least to the conflict very quickly. And, well, I agree that simply reaching out and grabbing someone to read their mind, Sunset is not quite on starlight levels of disrespecting personal space. But at the same time, it is a necessary in this case. Mm, true. How true. else can she figure out what's going on? True, 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 true. Uh, did you... I, I forgot to know... That's right. I forgot to point this out earlier, but did you guys remember um, the scene where... Rainbow, sorry, uh, Starlight... Uh, sorry, mm, uh, Sunset is holding Rainbow Dash and looking through her memories? Yes. yes. Of, the, of the killer of the plants from... Uh, Little Shop of Horrors making their introduction. Yeah, uh, I, I, just, I just recently watched this one and it's not in the normal special. This was exclusive for the YouTubes. Just having her, it seems like a minor addition. I don't know if it really fleshes things out. Not really, but I just noticed it and 
I was a bit shocked by it, which another scene will pop up soon. I just remembered, but when we cross that bridge, I'll point it out. Alrighty. Anything more to add, Silver? Just that not a very good security guard if they, if someone is sitting under their watchtower. <laughs> Uh, lifeguard, I should say. I mean, you, you do. I that's coned off for a reason. Uh, but anywho, I'm gonna carry on. So, sunset goes back to Equestria High. What was CHS? Crystal? No. What was her man? I'm forgetting. Cantala High, CHS. Yes. So she goes back to school, go through to the portal, and meets up with Princess Twilight. And. Sunset here explains the scenario to Twilight and uh, Twilight suggests that we go meet someone who might know the answer and you're not going to like it. And they meet up with Princess Celestia and this moment was a lot of joy. I really, really love this scene a lot because it's one of those scenes where we want to see the reunion. Yay! And it was, it was rather bland, like vanilla ice cream. Yes. But anywho, they talk for a bit, uh, explain the situation. And Princess Celestia says, I think I, I personally don't know what's going on, but I know a place where we can do research. And that's the Royal Cantolet Library. And when they head to the library, this is another added scene where they meet up with Flash, who is guarding the library entrance. And yeah, uh, Sunset just noticed, like, is this my ex-boyfriend? Hmm, okay, whatever. So they arrive at the library and Twilight here says, I'm an expert at this place. This used to be my uh, home away from home. I know every book there is to know. And when Celestia heads off to a specific location, Twilight asks, uh, where are you going? There's nothing to, there's nothing more, <laughs> sorry, there's nothing important in that general direction. And Princess Celestia says, oh, we're just heading to the restricted section. And Twilight hyperventilates and panics because she got no idea that place exists. And when it's revealed that there's a secret passage, Twilight panics. And in all honesty, I love this. This is a lot of fun. So I'm just going to fast forward because uh, Cookie Twilight is a fun Twilight, and yay! So we get to see uh, Celestia and Sunset bond for a bit over how Twilight is going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and yay! That, that's a lot of fun. So should I stop here or carry on until they discover the scroll? I think we can talk about this scene. Yeah. All righty then. So, uh, Silver, what do you think? Well. <laughs> Unfortunately, Flash and his added scene, that's all he's going to get to enjoy this uh, episode, aside from nearly killing su Sunset. Really? How? Oh. I'll tell you later. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Is uh, it Flash Sentry? Mm, I, I, I'm looking at Flash. He's an Earth Pony? I thought he was a Pegasus. No, he's a Pegasus. Huh. I know that he never says a word in this special. Yeah, true. Actually, oh, yes. Now that you say it, it looks like they forgot to add in his wings. Yeah. <laughs> Or maybe may, maybe he got demoted. What, by cutting off his wings? Hey, if you can add them to Twilight, why can't you remove them from others? <laughs> I, wait, Discord did just that. Oh, God. I'm pretty sure he did something to make Celestia mad. <laughs> but carry on, Silver. Plus, uh, oh, that looks like my ex-boyfriend. Huh, neat. <laughs> that sums up Flash's at treatment in 90% of the series moving forward. Oh, God. <laughs> but here's the thing. Legend of Everfree was the one movie that really moved beyond uh, Equestria, really treated Equestria Girls as its own domain now. There was very, very little reference to it. So this almost feels like a backstep that once again we're relying on cameos as Sunset returns to Equestria. It's something I like to see, don't get me wrong, seeing Sunset readjusting to life as a horse <laughs> and getting to do magic. That is fun, but at the same time it's like, I thought you'd graduated past this. True, true. But at the same time, too, the risk involved in this needed the help of Equestria. But I, I do get what you mean. I, I understand what you mean. 
Now, I didn't think they overplayed uh, the reconciliation, although now I'm looking at a, a picture titled Chin Up Sunset right during their reconciliation. Celestia's hoof, uh, I don't know, her horseshoe is facing the wrong way. There's a little matter of animation glitches here. Here's the thing. Celestia is the kind, she's been around long enough to learn how to let go of anger uh, without and without prompting. I mean, I think she understands it's about moving forward for your own well-being. So this wasn't really about Sunset earning back Celestia's uh, respect. It was just taking that step on her own part to forgive herself uh, for her pa and so I thought it was a tender moment. Although I, I shake my fist because I did it first in my Sunset Shimmer video. <laughs> Man. I remember that. Man. But still, still, it was a good moment. It was a good moment. So the Twilight freak out. It's a Tuesday, isn't it? Uh, no. It must be a Tuesday if Twilight's freak out. Unless it's, unless it's that other kind of freak out, then it's a Wednesday <laughs> or a Thursday or a Friday. I do wonder going into this uh, library, pulling on those two books, does that mean no one ever wants to read the books labeled with the princess's cutie marks? But That is just insulting. <laughs> but I, I think there's a specific type of magic where only the two sisters can access it. I don't know. I mean, for all we know, those have those just really boring titles like The Dietary Needs of Princess Celestia, Lun Luna's Yarn Collection, <laughs> An Index. Oh, God. It was how boring. Of course, it is funny to see uh, Sunset close Twilight's gaping mouth. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> but it's also kind of said this Twilight is far more passionate and animated and fun than her human counterpart, which raises the question, why are we, why are we cutting back to the other more boring Twilight while this is going on? Uh, it feels like, I don't know, man. Like for me personally, for me, I, I feel like, they're trying to put that balance where, okay, we want to have the fun Twilight uh, be here for the story reasons, but we need to kind of have um, Psy Twi around too. I, I don't know, because it feels um, Miss Opportunity. Like, I don't know. Psy Twi is boring. If I feel that. But anywho... Um, can we move on? We shall. All right. So, F. Wait, I don't get to say anything in this. Wait, what? Did did I not ask you, Terra? No, you didn't. Oh my goodness, I forgot. Sorry about that. So, Terry, wow. whoa, flower, you're making Norman forget me. Uh, anywho, yes. Uh, Quick, what's my name? Bob. <gasps> Bulbasaur. Yes. yes, Bulbasaur. Oh my God, it's worse. <laughs> Bulbasaur. <laughs> But anywho, so what do you have to say? Well, I'm pretty sure this is the the, the fan service moment that someone was talking about earlier because I too wanted to see Sunset coming back to Equestria and making amends with Celestia. And I also like the scene too, how it shows that, you know, Celestia is not going to hold a grudge and that, you know, she's like, oh, okay, she forgives me, yay. And one little thing that I'm noticing here, I don't know if it's in the... um screenshots or whatever and i don't know did this come out before twilight opened up her friendship school because when they show the um, canterlot castle you could see sandbar right near the front of it oh yeah I, I i noticed that but i forgot to mention it yes uh episode came out on february 20 sorry february 17 2018 um i forgot let me double check that while you continue on so wait, Sandbar is right outside Canterlot Castle? Yeah. Yes. That's strange, because I... I mean, the only pictures I see are the far-off Canterlot. Uh, oh, yeah. There he... Wow, maybe they were just getting some use out of the pop... Out of the puppet. Yeah. He seems rather large compared to the other ponies. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the Sandbar had a build-up. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you said there. Oh, wait, no, I remember, too. We're not supposed to call him Sandbar. We're supposed to call him Vincent Tong. <laughs> Vinny! <laughs> Uh, okay, no. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, the school days came out on uh, March 24th, 2018. So the special came out first before. Foreshadowing. Yay. And also Magic School? Or movie? Maybe. Because what? Movie was first before school? 
I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because according to supervising director Big J Miller, the premiere takes place about a week or two after the events of the My Little Pony movie. Yep. So, movie first. Hmm. That says a lot. Well, carry on, Tara. So, like, like I said, I like how they handled um, Celestia making amends or Sunset apologizing to Celestia and Celestia says how she missed her. It's like, oh, that's so sweet. So glad that they got together and, you know, they made up for lost time. And then we, uh, then someone basically took the words out of my mouth because I too question this, how no one dis- uh, ever wanted to read the book about Celestia and Luna's cutie mark. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's in the restricted... No, it's near the back end. Nobody really goes there. Those are the boring books. And to pick out those books, you need Celestia and Luna's Magic. Exactly. I'm pretty sure Sci-Twire would enjoy that. That way might have made her a little more interesting because I'd actually prefer the Equestria Twilight other than Sci-Twire because I feel like uh, the Equestria Twilight... She's, how do I say this? She's more outgoing and more adventurous with, like, meanwhile with Sai Twai, she's not like shy as she was at first, but she still has moments where she's very quiet and mm, that's, I, I don't that's all I got to say. Yeah, but granted that uh, our pony princess here has a lot of experience under her belt. Like she has been at this, what I mean at this is friendship for a while now. So she has learned and evolved while uh, Sai Twai here is still learning about quote unquote friendship. I don't know. I mean, Equestria Twilight was always more passionate. Even in her isol, even when she was anti, she didn't see the value in friendship. So I think there's a marked difference. I mean, you never get to see Sai Twai really squeen over her latest invention or discovery. She is just a little excited when she introduces her flying drone. But at the same time, too, I feel like this argument here is, quote unquote, not fair. Because we spent like nine seasons with Twilight while we just spent a few moments with Sai Twai. Like, we didn't grow up with her, or we didn't grow with her, so we didn't really see all of her achievements and whatnot. Fair? You want fair? Life is not fair, Norman. <laughs> I'm just pointing out stuff. Fair, 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 fair to your fairness. Fair, fair. <laughs> but anywho, I am going to move on. So, uh, yes. we see that Twilight and Sunset are researching books in the restricted section of the library, trying to figure out what the hay is going on. This takes a while and yeah, I, I'm probably a few hours. So Twilight discovers something uh, and it is a scroll from Clover the Clever. Uh, she Clover the Clever is a he, right? Clover the Clever has been both. Really now? That's, that's one of the weirder things. In this special, it looks like a, a guy, and it wears, and the character wears a cloak similar to what, what Twilight uh, wore at a heartwarming. Mm-hmm. Now, what was it called? Heartwarming Eve. Heartwarming tale. I feel like that was. I feel like that was the one where all the characters were reenacting a Christmas story. Mm. I think that this was heartwarming w- Eve then. Heartwarming Eve, yes. Uh, so Clover the Clever is a guy in two versions, but later on. When it's uh, a matter of principles, they show a, f- a portrait of Clover the Clever, who is now most definitely female and wearing a much nicer cloak. Hmm. Well, I-, I guess when we reach there, we'll talk about it later. But anywho, uh, so anywho, uh, Twilight just says this is Clover's quote unquote journal and it states out what happened in the past. So, long story short, there's this. Too late. <laughs> there's this very mean sorcerer pony who erases everyone's memory and stuff and clover the clever here tries to stop the mean pony every time when he gets close the mean pony erases clover's memory and the only way for clover to kind of get back on track is to write down everything that he discovers and knows so uh in the last panel or whatever it is, 
it said that Clover the Clever chased down the perp to a portal and said portal is Sunset's world. That's confusing to say, but yes. So with that, they discover that Equestrian Magic is involved. So we go back to the main six at the beach. And you know what? I'm just going to fast forward this because they don't matter. Uh, Trixie plants seeds in their minds saying that, oh, there's something wrong with Sunset. Maybe she's up to something. Oh, evil, evil, evil. And tells Rarity that, don't forget to put my poster in the yearbook. I need it to boost my ego. Ooh. So we go back to Cantalot and they discover that the thing that has been uh, or the magic artifact that's involved is the memory stone where they have to get back and destroy or something like that. So uh, they got a plan, they need to execute it and they do or they try to. And oh man, this is rather confusing going back and forth. But I'm just going to fast forward a bit. Sunset goes to the main six saying that, yo guys, um, I know what's going on. It's question magic. There's question magic involved. Look, I have proof that we were friends. Look at this picture and whatnot. And she tries but fails to earn their trust. So Sunset goes back home frustrated. And she goes back to school. And everybody sees her as a big meanie, a big giant bully. And she confronts Trixie, thinking that Trixie is the one involved in the madness that's going on. And once Sunset confronts Trixie, uh, Trixie got no idea what's going on because, well, Trixie is not involved because she just wants a poster of her talented magic trick in the yearbook. That's about it. And they bonded for a bit because Trixie understand what Star Sunset is going through right now. So they work together to discover who is involved and who is the perp. Back in Equestria, Twilight do more research on the matter, the, trying to find out any other clue that they could probably help Sunset with. And Twilight discovers the parchment, the final page of Clover the Clever's book or scroll. And it says that if the memory is not returned within three days, uh, they will be gone forever. And to return them, you need to destroy the rock. So Twilight sends a message to Sunset, but Sunset does not receive it. And I'm going to stop here. Tara, what do you think? Well, one thing I am going to point out, hasn't anyone noticed that after of going opening all those doors and then walking into the same room, Luna just disappears? What, you mean for the library? Yeah, like she helped Celestia open up the door and then as soon as they walk into the restricted, restricted area of the library, she's just gone. Uh, she got a text. <laughs> I don't know, just, just one little nitpick. But I do like how um, Sunset and Twilight, they're bonding in Requestria instead of like, it, you, basically like how instead of them bonding in Sunset's world, now she's back in Equestria and they're bonding by going through all the books and because Twilight talks about going through all the books and even that one comedic moment where um, Sunset mentions something about, uh, ooh, I forget the name. Um Anyways, they mentioned about someone doing s something, and then Twilight's like, "Ah, you read all the good stuff," <laughs> and can't really say much about Trixie. Basically, manip. Uh, I guess you could say she's manipulating. Basically, putting a bad word on Sunset, and it's just Trixie being Trixie because you know she wants to be in the yearbook, and that didn't work out so well. And then, uh, I do like the how-to that, uh, when they're about to leave Celestia, she's like, you're always welcome to come back. And it's just very heartwarming still that Celestia forgives Sunset. And then after, when Sunset's like, oh, I have a, I have a great teacher, Celestia just comes and be like, are you saying I wasn't a good teacher? We just, she finds out that she's just joking. And again, I do, I, I enjoy stuff like that. I, I like how 
you know, just because you're royalty, you don't always have to be so mean and stuff. Like, you could play jokes on them if you want to. <laughs> true, 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 true. And then, the usual, they find out that, oh, here's Equestrian Magic. But the same thing as last time where it's like, oh, yeah, we still don't believe you. We don't trust you. <laughs> All righty then. So, Silver? Well, it, especially interesting, the comment about Celestia. This, this sparked some discussion when it first came out. I wondered if Celestia, if Sunset isn't expecting humor from Celestia, then Celestia's her teacher must have been very stern and strict. And I wondered if it was Star, uh, Sunset's departure that made Celestia realize I need to loosen up or I'm going to lose more students. That is very possible. I think there's a high chance that that is the truth. But it's also a chance that Celestia has learned to laugh more since Luna's return, as people pointed out. That perhaps finally mending... Well, <laughs> Celestia's been doing a lot of repairs to her relationships over the more recent uh, media. She reunited with her sister. She got... Uh, now she's reconnecting with Sunset. She also got back her teacher, Star Swirl, thanks to Twilight. So... I guess Celestia's social life is just flourishing these days. Now, with Clover the Clever and this grand hunt through universes, I keep expecting someone to throw a letter through the portal to Equestria saying, stop dropping your junk in our universe. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Star Swirl banishes, uh, Clover the Clever chucks stuff into the other unknown. Is anyone in this going to respect that this is not a dumpster universe? Meanwhile, the fans are probably like, dump it in our universe! <laughs> no, we don't need those kind of chaos. I, I There are parts of this year I'd like to forget. Then there's also the scene where Trixie reunites with, uh, well, reconciles with Sunset. Because here's the thing, Trixie has been a super antagonist in this series. I mean, she dumped the others into, uh, into a backstage by a trap door. So it's more of an understage. Huh. And she's always been sort of this recurring antagonist. And now suddenly she's the one understanding Sunset because Trixie, in a weird way, does connect with others under their worst uh, aspects. She, she admits her own failings and connects with them on that. And that's a very interesting character trait. It, it somewhat reflects her pony counterpart which uh, became friends with Starlight. Sometimes it's more about what goes wrong between the two of you than what goes right. So it's nice to see her finally on uh, a supportive side. True, true. And I think fans have been clamoring for that because we already got uh, Trixie and Starlight and those, are, those two have been a lot of fun. And moving forward from this, I thought we were going to get more... Sunset and Trixie bonding, but nah, it was only in this. It was only in this. But to answer Torterra's question, I know what happened to Luna when they went into the into the restricted section. Oh, spying the the dusty and spider covered shelves, she saw her old comic book collection oh. and thought to herself, "So this is where Sister has been keeping my back orders. I have thousands of years of." Lore to catch up on. And she's been reading the corner this entire time. Uh, she's been questioning, why did Pony Parker sold his soul to the devil? Oh, no. Truly, that was the worst of the retcons. <laughs> oh, no, not his soul. His marriage. Marriage. Oh, no. Marriage is what we said to the continuity. Oh, God. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Created by the Orakalkamaos. Anywho, <clears throat> Whew, um, going to move on. So we see, okay, um, for future reference, I'm just going to skip a lot of this because it's going to be more of the quote-unquote same thing. So Sunset and Trixie here both investigate who is involved in the sabotage and whatnot. So as, she, as, as they go around asking people and whatnot, uh, they don't get the answer and they go back to the yearbook office what was that called it whatever it is and sunset sees her friends taking a selfie and she's frustrated by it so while looking through clues like pictures of the yearbook 
they spot an empty spot on the yearbook photo. And Trixie just says, who is this wallflower blush? And wallflower in the background says, it's me. We, we know each other and stuff. Like, you don't remember me and stuff. Like, how come? While Trixie is talking to wallflower, just trying to reintroduce herself, uh, Sunset gets a message from Twilight saying, okay, Sunset, this is important. I'm just going to tell it to you as it is. If you don't destroy the rock before sunset today, all of your memories or the memories of your friend, whatever it is, is going to be permanently erased. Uh, try looking for this rock formation. Probably you can get it and whatnot. So good luck. So Sunset just wonders, where the hey am I going to discover three rock formations that look like this? And when she sees Wallflower's wallpaper, she says Eureka and goes to Wallflower and asks, um, where did you took that picture and stuff? Wallflower starts talking and Sunset grabs her hand and just reads her memory. <clears throat> and in Wallflower's memory, she has always been a loner and stuff. Like she is very bland. Like she mingles, she, she melts in the background. And she starts walking to the garden or forest, whatever it is, and discovers a nice patch of land to plant gardens. She cleans it and digs something out and it is a rock. And she's feeling frustrated about sunset and how she's all perfect and whatnot. And she incites a spell and removes all the memory of Sunset being nice from everyone. And with that, Sunset confronts Wallflower, talks about why are you doing this, and we get a song! Yay! Out of nowhere! What? <laughs> but anywho... Yeah, I just hate it when people start randomly singing out of the blue. Nah, that's a Tuesday for me. But anywho, once song is on sunset takes the opportunity to rummage into wallflower's bag and tries to steal the stone uh, wallflower notice and stops the musical and removes their memory of the afternoon and i am going to pause here because this is very fun uh silver what do you think well the true villain comes to the fore although one thing we haven't remarked on is that sunset's reaction to this crisis is to get mad, which is a little bit of her older self shining through, or burning mm. through. Sunset is not one to handle things coolly and with grace. She's passionate and therefore gets prone to anger very, very quickly. Even seeing her friends taking the photo outside, her reaction is this stirring anger at someone she, do at, she doesn't even know at whom to direct it. Then there's Wallflower, and we learn all that's really been, uh, all that's been going on with her. I don't think we learned just yet that she used this to erase some of her own uh, embarrassments. There, that was an important line, but that comes later. Instead, it's just sort of fun to see her spilling her heart and <laughs> Sunset is like, okay, you know what? I got work to do. <laughs> do you know how rude it is to try and steal from someone while they're singing? I don't know. Is that a cultural faux pas? Yeah. If someone is belting it out at random and leaves their wallet, I might decide that there's a listener's fee involved. No, man, you don't. Like, it, it's it's proper etiquette. When the hero or the villain tries to henshin, you don't interrupt them. That is, but that would be the smart thing to do. Proper etiquette. No, I'd take the Megas XLR approach. <laughs> While they're just standing there spinning, you're just watching like, what? Uh, Megas XLR breaks every boundary or breaks every rule in the rule book. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Any who still have anything more to add? Just that uh, it's fun. Hmm. And this is probably Wallflower at her angriest. But nobody will remember. Oh, the, fa the fans will remember. Oh, Torterra, when did you get here? I don't know, actually. It's a Bubasaur. <laughs> ah. I'm sorry, it sounded like you said Boobasaur. Yes, Boobasaur. <laughs> you squirt attack takes on a whole different meaning. Oh my god. 
Anywho, Tara, your turn. Well, I don't know if I can get that image out of my head now. <laughs> Alright, well, let's see. It was very fun, and I like how... Well, first off, I must mention that Sunset either... I must have a really good grip on her hands, or the people are just knocked out while she's looking back at their memories. Because when Sunset grabs Wallflower's uh, hand or arm, that memory thing goes on for quite a while. And it's like, what are you doing while all this is going on? Like, are you just standing there and letting it happen? Like, are you trying to fight her off or what? I have to interject here because this is more headcanon on my part. But when Sunset touch someone to read their memory, uh, it happens in a flash. But in the head when she's reading the memory, it goes in quote-unquote real time, while in the living world or in whatever time that they're in, it happens in a snap. Hmm. Oh, that answers my question. No, I mean, the head cannon, I could be wrong. We may never know. But then all of a sudden, you know, she breaks into song, which is... Basically, just her singing how she's been invisible, because I think that's the name of the song. Yep, yep. <laughs> Which... And I can kind of agree, because back then, I used to be so shy, I rarely talk to people, and when I try to get someone's attention, I'd be so quiet, and there'd be times where I just don't say anything at all. Yeah. So it kind of hits me on a personal level. I, I guess uh, Wallflower is a relatable character for us introverts. And then later on, when because Sunset talks about how she's not mean, but she she shows it, and they, well, Silver pretty much did a good explanation. But yeah, true, 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 true. <laughs> and then and then once she uses the memory stone, she just disappears. So I don't know if after she uses the memory stone, she just she has super speed and runs out, or maybe since they forgot about her, she like she's like invisible for a few seconds. I don't know. So many questions. But, yeah. Probably. But anywho, I'm going to carry on. So, with them forgetting what's going on and why they are in the yearbook room, they panic for a bit and says that if we can't find the perpetrator, we are. I am going to lose all my memories about my friends and whatnot. Oh, that's not good. And Sunset looks her pocket and discovers a note said note says go to twilight's camera and she discovers that hey i've been recording this and let me check out what's going on and long story short it just retells what just happened a few minutes ago or a few hours ago so sunset figures out okay we need to find wallflower before something bad happens or before sunset if not well i am going to be sad and sunset bonds with trixie saying that if i lose my friends at least i still have you trixie and all of the fanfics are out there yay <laughs> so anywho trixie tries her best to do her magical exit poofy spell thingy and it worked, except that Sunset is still inside the office. So Trixie does it again and gets Sunset out. And well, Tr Trixie just says, okay, um, forget about me. You just go out there and get your memory back. So Sunset chase after Wallflower who is in the parking lot. And they argue for a bit. Sunset confronts Wallflower saying that what you're doing is wrong you need to return the memory and wallflower says no i do not want to you know what i'm just going to erase their memory of you entirely and sunset says no that's not fair that's terrible and before life isn't fair <laughs> and before uh sunset could talk her down wallflower blasts a memory erasing spell at the main six which Sunset jumps in front of it to absorb the damage. And with that, all of Sunset's memory of high school is gone. And I, you know, honestly, I like this part here because we see panicking Starlight. Sorry, Sunset. Yay. So Sunset panics because what's going on here? This is not Cantalot. 
and why am I why, why do I look like this? Why do I have these appendages on my hooves? Oh no! And the first to greet a panicking sunset is Twilight or Sai Twi. And all of them apologize and back sunset up. And they transform into the... Well, I won't say power ponies, but their pony up form, was it? Yes, a that's what they call it, pony now. Yes, so they transform into their pony forms and they look like superheroes. Yes. So anywho, uh, before Twilight could do the magical French, no, the magical girl power talk thing, Pinkie Pie just says, yeah, 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 we get it. Let's light her up, ladies. So they collect their power and do a rainbow blast to the memory stone and destroys it. So after that, with the memory stone destroy, everybody gets their memory back and yay! Awesomeness! Sunset goes to Wallflower saying that uh, I can relate, I can understand and let's hug it out. And they do. And I'm gonna pause here. So Tara, what do you think? I do like how Trixie and... Uh, I, oh, you almost got me to say Starlight there, Norman. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing to make me forget these things. Probably I'm just good at it. But I do like how they're bonding and how Sunset's pretty much let, like, look on the bright side. Uh, like, she, even though she's thinking of the worst that she could possibly lose her friends, she's still looking a bit on the bright side. It's like, at least I still have someone that cares for me. But I do like, too, how she had that note in her pocket and it's like, oh, I wrote a note to myself, just like Clover the Clever. I think that was what his name was. Yay! And, and it's like, oh yeah, that's right, because the drone was right there and she recorded it. And then I'd, I'd love that one moment where uh, in the recording they got, um, I had a brain fart there for a second, Wallflower uh, singing her song. Trick's just like, oh, let's fast forward this. She fast forward and she's like, oh, this is a really long song. It's like, yeah, we have to go through all that. But I also like too how Trixie, sac I, well... Yeah, I guess you could say sacrifice herself. It's not like she dies or anything, but she gives up the um, herself to save Sunset. And then you know we got the usual where the um, they usually pony up. And I actually do like how the uh, Twilight's like, "You have magic, this and that." And then Pinky's like, "Yeah, yeah, we get it. Let's do this already." <laughs> but it's I like this one because it even shows to like. Because Wallf Wallflower basically tries to remove the good memories from them, and they're like, Oh, you're getting their friendship back, and it's working! I'm just gonna have to erase their memories in general! And Sunset basically goes right in front and e lose all of her memory. And even though she doesn't remember now who Twilight or everyone else is, and th since they don't know that Sunset's their friend, I'm, I'm, it makes me happy. It's like, okay, that was actually that was actually a good way to get them to be friends again because it's not like they had to do convince anyone or anything like that. No, it's just Sunset, out of the goodness of her heart, dove right in, took the hit, lost all of her memories, and they're like, okay, we know she's a good person, so we know that she's telling the truth and that she's our friend. All right, all right. Anyway, uh, Silver, what do you think? Well, let's see here. We completely glossed over the other Flash Century appearance, which. Uh, at the time, I thought he was slamming on the brakes of his car before he hit sunset. But looking again at this scene, I think he was actually just idling. Yeah, he, he just arrived. Which, that describes his, his role in these specials from now on. Just idling. Uh, except for that one musical. You know, I, truth be told, I haven't carved out the time to actually watch that. Oh, man. I, I'll just say this because uh, the musical was leaked earlier on. So we got to see that way in advance because Hasbro wanted to publish that music video on International Women's Day and oh man <laughs> let's just say that personally for me it was cringy uh, well we can ta we can tackle that another time it's unfortunate Flash this could have been a time to shine as he was one who believed it, Sunset even if he couldn't remember because he knows when she's lying that would be something that would further his character. It would further perhaps their own relationship. Uh, I don't hate Flash. I just find him criminally underutilized. And 
if anything, he needs to have a character of his own before he starts really pursuing romantic interest with any other character. Otherwise, he's it's just on looks. Yeah, true that because Vinny here, he he's a one note character where he's just a pretty boy, and in all honesty, there's nothing more to go beyond that. Like, he's technically perfect, so no flaws, and that makes him boring. But also no goals, no motivations beyond, I want to date this pretty girl. Wow. Mm. Defining yourself by your relationships. Now, that actually leads us into uh, Wallflower and her admittance that when she, st she didn't just wipe away memories of Sunset, she also wiped away memories of herself whenever she did something embarrassing or uh, just failed at a social interaction. Just, bloop, gone. But as a result, no one remembers her. And I always think back of a, a Star Trek episode called Tapestry, where Picard tries to undo a mistake in his own past, and it unravels his life. And I think it says something, that we are, we are both the good and the bad that happens to us, and just because something bad happens doesn't mean you can't learn from it. If we ha I have often joke, I wish life had an, a command Z, undo uh, shortcut. But without that, we are, we never learn. If you could just undo your mistakes, then you never learn from them. True, true. And I've always lived by this mantra where losing is learning. If you keep winning, you get stagnant and you don't improve. If you lose, you learn from your loss and you improve in the future. There's also the argument that if you win all the time, you're never really testing yourself. It depends on how you win because if you push yourself to the limit and you win, that means you're improving yourself. But uh, how do I put this? A good analogy is look at Dragon Ball Goku. He keeps winning because when he gets kicked, he always pushes to the extreme. Extreme! Mm -hmm. well, well, anywho. Though, again, they, Goku also wins all the time because he's got like 50 plot devices in his favor. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Like what? Uh, color, uh, flavor of color. Oh, he goes blonde. Oh, blonde's not good enough. He goes redhead. Oh, redhead's not good enough. He goes blue. Oh, blue's not good enough. He goes white. I beg your pardon. It is silver. Silver? Really? Silver. The, mo the most powerful color. Yes. Uh... <laughs> Gold's just a poser. <laughs> Well, let's also not forget the hair extensions. Uh, now, does he? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's, that's this Super, one tree. Super Saiyan 3, yeah. which is, which they seem to have abandoned. Yeah. Yeah, sadly. I actually like that form, too. Not really. Uh, not really. I, I don't like it that much. But if you want to say about hair extensions, talk about 4. <laughs> 4? Yeah. Super Saiyan 4. Ah, oh. oh there, there you go. <laughs> but... Actually, speaking of super forms, when the Equestria Girls transform, I do love how the memory-deprived Sunset looks down and is like, the frig is going on here? <laughs> yeah, like, this is new. <laughs> and there, there is that whole Magical Girl transformation scene, and I fully expected Twilight to end with, in the name of friendship, we will punish you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it's fun to see. Although I got to wonder with, with Trixie, she legitimately teleported somehow. Mm -hmm. Don't know how, but she did. And she doesn't know how she did. She just threw a smoke bomb and hoped something good would happen. <laughs> uh, that actually is a bit like a role-playing game I've been a part of. But uh, does she just throw smoke bombs at her feet and see what happens? That could wind up very awkward. Like the smoke clears and she's in Celestia's... Uh, office oh good you're just in time for detention <laughs> uh, yes yes but i i don't know i mean trixie well in this world trixie is a normal human who does magic tricks so for her to teleport that's something else she might indeed be the only magical person in this yeah. world magical non-pony to be exact but she is perpetually overshadowed by the magician, by the magicians from another world. But anywho, uh, what about Wallflower at the end? Well, like I say, it's it's the tapestry. Oh, 
if you just try to wipe away what didn't work out and instead of learning from it, nothing's going to change. And she is likable. I mean, I agree that uh, any introvert or anyone who's struggled in a public setting will identify with her desire and maybe her anger. And yet we see what we see that because that's all she focused on, she never moved forward. True. But I always wonder, like, why is she always angry or why is she jealous about Sunset? Because I think Sunset never even bullied her when she was mean. So why all the rage? I think Sunset likely did just by law of averages. But, but, okay. Let's assume for a moment that by, by, that Wallflower was too unnoticeable for even Sunset to bully. Here's someone who was utterly horrible and yet somehow has worked her way back into everyone's good graces while Wallflower does her best and still, uh, and is still rejected. Yes, life is not fair, but it's, but you can at least say, you can say, you can note the unfairness. That's a big part of it. Yeah, but at the same time, too, you, you we get sense... Uh, this is on the fact that we see the journey of Sunset instead of Wallflower, but I digress. So, but anywho, uh, Sunset here, we, we see her journey from being the mean girl and becoming a demon and getting the smackdown from Princess Twilight and her friends. And then when Battle of the Band happens, uh, she tries to be friendly, but nobody trusts her because she's a big meanie. And then in the end, she proves to everyone that she is a good girl. And then if we want to hop into the comic universe, there's the uh, Miss Unknown uh, debacle where everybody mistrusts her again. And then like she has to, she had to work for her improvement. She has to prove to everyone that she has changed. Like, we got no idea what Wallflower tried to did, so to me, it feels unfair to compare the, them both. Well, she's doing that to herself, though. Wallflower is running that comparison in her own mind. So this is this is where anger and can be... Anger can be a motivator to change, but it can also be a prison that leads to stagnation. It's how you apply it. And unfortunately, Wallflower just sat and stewed about the whole situation until she was given the means to hurt someone, which doesn't advance her at all. She still ignored. So I don't know if she can even call that a victory. Hmm. True, true. Yeah, I mean, Wallflower here technically didn't, really, technically didn't do much to advance herself that we know of. Oh, well, at least we get to see them shippings. Na 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 shipping. Na 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 shipping. In this universe, we get to see a probable ship between Sunset and Trixie, Sunset and Wallflower. So, I like this universe. There's a lot of ships going on. Yay. Except for Flash. Sunset and Flash will never happen. <laughs> oh, oh, so mean. If he can learn to value himself as an individual first and stop trying to be his Sunset's toady, maybe. Also, I do notice that the, as they're hanging out at the portal entrance, the statue is still gone. They still haven't replaced it. Silver, the budget to replace it is expensive. They could build that dang motor runway. They could rebuild a statue. <laughs> but I mean, it does have a good point. <laughs> anyway, let me wrap this up. So... If not, there is a gross misallocation of school funds. <laughs> but anywho, uh, I, I'm going to wrap it up. So, Sunset uh, Sunset writes to Princess Twilight telling her about all that happened. And we get to see an epilogue where the yearbook arrives and gets to, get to see things like, Hey, um, Sunset managed to put Trixie's poster into the yearbook. And they two bond. And we get to see, um, what you call this? Sunset goes to Wallflower, giving her a yearbook and showing her that, hey, um, you're our friend. This this is awesome. Yes, no, yes. And like you mentioned before, Silver, um, Suns Sunset and her friends are hanging out in the portal. And yeah, that's about it. So <laughs> they just hang out. 
And before we end, we get to see Rainbow Dash's fear about them being next to Bulk Bicep for having the most biggest muscle. And when he close, it feels like they're kissing him. I need an adult! I am an adult, but actually it's even better. See, Twilight is reaching her hand up in that photo. <laughs> So she's wanting to stroke the muscles. Oh god, I need an adult! I am an adult! And with that episode ends. Oh. But not the nightmares. <laughs> oh god. So anywho, um, yeah, uh, Silver, final thoughts and... Yeah, final thoughts. Well, Bubasaur's uh, special attack does sound rather bizarre. But, oh, it, I, but I imagine it's very high in calcium. <laughs> And, you know, copping a feel off bulk biceps' uh, chest may not be the worst thing ever. I wouldn't I wouldn't try it myself. But if that's what Twilight wants to do or imply, that's fine. Yeah, this is a, this discussion has been pretty messed up, hasn't it? Yes, indeed. It has. Indeed. I find that this... How do I put this? Unfortunately, in terms of fandom reaction, drawing the main six, uh, the humane seven in swimsuits has been the big creative takeaway. Wallflower, honestly, I feel like she's been neglected, which is somewhat tragic given her role in the story. I see a lot of, uh, I see a part of myself in her, in her introversion, in her frustration at times. I I see it in the, in maybe a desire to push back against people who you feel don't deserve uh, whatever they're enjoying. It's a very human thing. I'd argue that Sun Wallflower is actually the second best antagonist in this series after the Sirens. Not because she is evil, but because she's very understandable. The Sirens were evil and entertaining as they did it. Wallflower is very human. And yet she doesn't really get a chance to stand out or much follow-up besides a dance scene where she is apparently bought into the Hot Topic uh, fashion of Camelot High, which, funny enough, really makes her up more of a background character than when she was unique. And now, now, now I'm curious about how Wallflower looks with her new uh, outfit. <laughs> Let me see if I can go through and find the song. All right. It's it's part of the uh, phase of Sunset's backstage pass. Ah. Uh -huh. But uh, but anything more to add, Silver? No, I think that'll do it for the time being. All right, and Tara, what about you? Well, I, I really like this story. I mean, I like how Wallflower is basic. I mean, I wouldn't say she's a huge villain because she's not like from Equestria. You know, she's not being dumped from the another world into here. She's basically another a normal person. She happened to stumble across a just a small little artifact. I know that in the um the last one, Legends of Everfree, it was yeah, it was a huge artifact that basically changed um. Oh, I forget her name. <laughs> Wallflower? But basically, no, 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 the, um, in Legends of Everfree, the, the girl that's in charge of the camp. Uh, Gloria Daisy. Gloriosa Daisy. Yeah, the, yeah, Gloriosa, that's it. Uh, she, yeah, she's a normal person, but the magic changes her. Here, Wallflower finds something that's from Equestria, but it doesn't change her. And she started off with, like you said, she started off using small things, like making mistakes, stuff like that. And then as she, as she got more comfortable with it, she started erasing bigger memories. And that's what I like. It's like, yeah, okay, it's not a big villain, but it's just a person that's trying to fix her mistakes. And then she got so used to it that now it's like, you know, she doesn't really notice it. I also like too how, like I I just like this. I like this short. I like how I like some of the comedy, and it has a good lesson because again, like I said earlier, how I kind of relate to Wallflower. How I used to be so shy too at first, and later I got out of my comfort zone. And that's another thing too I like about Wallflower. A lot of people can relate to her, and I'm pretty sure too a lot of people are very happy in the special with Sunset going back into Equestria and talking with Celestia again. And yeah, and that is a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun. Although. Now that you say it, uh, maybe there should be a PSA special at the end. Remember, kids, equestrian magic, not even once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But anywho, uh, as for me, this special was a lot of fun to watch. But I don't know. This was for um, unmemorable. <laughs> uh, I want to say forgettable, but... Eh. 
Yes, if if it was bad, then I'd say yeah, it's pretty forgettable. <laughs> yeah. it, it had its moments. Like this was, this was okay. It had its moments. Like especially, uh, Celestia and Sunset's reunion. That was a lot of fun, and then we get to see, uh, Trixie and Sunset teaming up. That that was a lot of fun too. But uh, I mean, there's a lot of missed opportunities in this one, especially with the main six trying to regain their memory. I, I guess that looking at the main six and them not doing anything to move the plot kind of frustrates me because they're just there in the background. They're not doing anything. Like, they're not doing anything significant. Yet, there are, like, sorry, yet they are the main plot or the main drive for our hero to get to and in this one it just feels like yeah sunset just needs to get the memory back how by destroying a rock oh yay uh, as for wallflower she's a pretty interesting character for me i am quote-unquote uh introvert so i can relate but at the same time too her plan to slowly remove embarrassing moments of herself does ring true. I can relate. But at the same time too, I, I don't know. I, I feel like they could have done more, yet I, I don't know. Like with Gloria Sadezi, the equation magic kind of took her over. And also Juniper... Juniper, what was her name, Silver? Juniper Bug? Uh, Juniper Montage. Yeah, Juniper Montage. Uh, that too consume her. And this one seems like she is cold. I won't say victim. Like, she's just vanilla. Nothing much happened. Like, she just used stone to make people forget about her. Which is kind of bland. Oh well. Still, uh, interesting character. Uh, move Special was okay. But a lot of fun. I would highly recommend people go watch it because it's entertaining. But with that, I, I say go watch it. Anyway, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, before we get into that, I do want to point out that I posted a picture of uh, of Wallflower's new look as seen in the outdoor concert series. Ah, yes, that one. So, she's definitely brought into the branding. But, but, yep. but, but Silver, <laughs> I have to point out or just highlight something because... Uh, on the wiki page for uh, Wallflower, we saw her going into the concert normally in her normal clothes. This one is just her, well, partying it up. Because she, you, sorry, her friends got her to to dress up for the occasion. Yeah, don't but you it's just the start. Hot topic fashion, not even once. Dead, but don't you remember Fluttershy? Yes, the crusher. Yeah. So, how do you know this is? But this is this may be her new look as well. We now know her cutie mark, so to speak. I don't think so, because we think of that as a terrible pickup line. Hey there, what's your cutie mark? <laughs> you want to see mine? Oh god, no! Oh my! Why are you throwing that drink in my face? Oh god, the alcohol burns! <laughs> oh, oh boy! Well, anywho, silver. Next week, what do? Well, we're going to go into something spooky in the middle of, the, well, at the start of the summer. Okay, we're not exactly timing this quite right. We're going to be talking about My Little Pony French Miss Magic number 71, starring the student six. Yay. We, we haven't touched the My Little Pony comics in a while, so this is a really great comeback. But I do have to say that the issue does clash with the timing but if we have to wait until october we will be reviewing the pony comics for a while now <laughs> no no you see you see by october the by the coronavirus will have mutated and we might have the social distance zombie apocalypse they actually lurch away from you trying to keep uh trying to keep social distance oh no Arr! oh my goodness Arr! oh righty then and when they call for brains, it's because you're doing something so stupid. <laughs> oh, man. No, no, no. 
it's too stupid even to repeat here because I don't want to I don't want this podcast to be outdated by memes. Like oh no man, no. No, with all that I've referenced, I think I've dated this pretty well already. <laughs> well I dated me I... yeah, but you <laughs> I'm just See, I'm all I've already dated because I'm old. No, because I'm just thinking uh, the news. Like, uh, one person said, oh, why don't we uh, inject ourselves with a uh, cleaning solution? Mm, sweetie, but please help me with this one. That's not a word. You don't do that. <sighs> Sorry, just had to let that one out. But anywho, um, am I missing anything, Silver? Your happiness? I think my sanity. Well, that's overrated. I chucked that years ago. <laughs> but anywho, um, well, uh, let's move on. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, you can find me lots of places. You can find me on DeviantArt and Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. You can find me posting editorials and eventually comic reviews on Equestria Daily. We will get back there. I'm confident. Yay. We still have the Ponies in Disguise comic coming along and manga number three. We can only hope. You can find me on DeviantArt. Well, I already said DeviantArt. You can find me on YouTube. I... Uh, just do a search for Silver Quill after the fact. I've taken to streaming to, on uh, Patreon Pledge Fulfillments every Friday with guests. And uh, I, I'm working on my next after the fact video. Also, you, you can support me on both Patreon or Ko-fi. Just search again for MLP Silver Quill. Yay, much fun. And well, do go check it out. <laughs> Guys, go check it out because uh, besides the... Uh, Equestria Daily post that he does. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the live stream that he does on the YouTube is also fun. You you get to see him talk to guests about a lot of stuff. Especially, uh, well, last I joined in was Silver talking about Godzilla with Matt Munchkin. Yay! Godzilla! Godzilla! Who Godzilla! <laughs> yeah, who knows? Maybe in the future, I might have a spot talking about something with silver and boring the audience oh no that's bad maybe people don't want to put me in <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho tara where can the good people find you well the good people can find me on facebook DeviantArt, twitter or youtube under the name torterra 1324 or they could just do a google search and i'll be on all platforms including my patreon page and my ko-fi page awesome 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 go check him out too guys yeah sorry but why torterra when you're a bulbasaur <laughs> I'm not a Bulbasaur. Oh, you're a Bulbasaur then. <laughs> well, funny story, actually. I, my username used to be Bulbasaur. <laughs> ah. <laughs> so you're a Bulbasaur. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stitch your radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also contact us on... Sorry, you can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and edited content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Amy, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself, Black. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And I am Proterra. Bulbasaur. <laughs> and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Bubasaur. Oh my god, why? So where's the forgetting stone kind of needed right now, right? Wait, what stone? Wait a minute, did we even record the episode yet? Don't worry, I won't let Torterra forget this. <laughs> booba booba. <laughs> oh jeez.